Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, for this texture, we've got a few different layers to work on, but it's the same simple scene setup that I've used before. So I've got a sphere in the middle with a floor made out of a plane. Then I've got three lights, a rim, a left and a right, pointing directly at a target, which is at the front of the sphere. And then I have also got a light pointing directly at the backdrop and a camera set up. If I move over to the shading tab and enable viewport shading, we can see that we've got everything working as it should be. And then if we select the object, you can see that I already have a principled shader and a material output assigned to that object, which means we can just start creating the texture. So first I am going to need a noise texture. So shift A, noise texture. I'm going to apply a mapping node and a texture coordinate to that and use the object output from the texture coordinate. Now they're going to serve um, all of our different texture pieces. So I'll just pop them out the way for now. And we are going to plug that into the base color. We'll set the scale at 50 detail at 15 roughness at 0.75 to that we are going to add a mix rgb node now keep in mind this um, has been combined with a variety of other tasks in version 3.5 onwards so you'll need to look for a mix node and then use the color um, as the mixing whatever just look out for that difference we're then going to take the vector from the mapping node into color one, and that will automatically shift the factor from the noise texture into color two. We're leaving it as mix and leaving the value at 0.5. I'm then going to get a Voronoi texture and drop that in there. I beg your pardon, we need to take the color from the noise texture and put that into color two. Uh, for the scale on the Voronoi texture, we're going for 500, randomness of one. Now I actually want to use this for um, the bump detail. So let me first apply a frame around these two. That's Shift P if you're using the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. The uh, Node Wrangler add-on. So there we've got our basic sand, and I'm actually going to plug that into the normal. Add a bump node just for the moment. We've got other things to create. Next up, let's create the waves of the dunes. So we're going to need another noise texture. Oops, not a white noise. I always do that. Noise texture. Color ramp. Wave texture. Mix RGB and another color ramp, so I'll just duplicate that one. Let's plug that into the base color. Let's take the vector into the vector inputs of both the noise texture and the wave texture. Taking the factor from the noise texture into the color ramp and then the color from the color ramp into the factor of the mix RGB node, plugging that 
into the color ramp there. Taking the color here from the wave texture into color two and making color one white. For the scale on the noise texture, we're going for four and detail of 15. And for the scale on the wave texture, uh, we're going for one. Distortion of 10, detail of 15, and everything else will leave the same. On the color ramp, we're going to bring the black value, let's say 0.14, maybe a bit less, 0.114. Yep. And then for the white value, we're going to bring that down here, let's say 0.7. Now for this color ramp, we're going to start bringing in a little color itself, but we're going to move the white and the black values in by 0.15. So we'll try and find ourselves. A sort of a sandy color. This first one on the left will be the dark values. They'll sit in the valleys of those dunes. Um, and then we'll control C and select the white value and control V so that it basically matches, but then we can increase the value and maybe drop the saturation a bit. Looks okay to me. Let's apply a frame around that as well and call it dunes. And we'll disconnect that for now. And actually, I'm going to get rid of that bump node because it's making no sense whatsoever. Next up, we're going to create some debris, you know, the kind of broken shells and stuff that sit on top of the sand. So for that, we are going to use a noise texture, a Voronoi texture, two color ramps, one for each, and then a mix RGB node. Now we are of course going to take the vector from the mapping node and plug that into both of those nodes there. Let's plug this into the base color. Factor to factor on both of these or distance to factor sorry on the bottom one. Color into the factor from this top set and then color into color two here and change the value color value to black and the interpolation mode to add scale on the noise texture we're going to set to 50 detail of 15 and then for the Voronoi texture, we're going to go distance to edge. Set the scale at 22.5 and leave the randomness at 1. Going to set the interpolation mode on both color ramps to constant. On the top one, we're dragging the white value over to about there. And on the bottom one, you're basically dragging it until you, you've got enough scattering of debris. So somewhere about there is fine for me. Let's put that in a frame.
Okay, so we've got the three elements that go to make up this beach scene, but what we need to do is mix them together in a very particular way, and then of course add some bump detail. Okay, so to mix things together, we are again going to need a mix RGB. <coughs> Excuse me. We're actually going to need two of those to create the base color. So we'll connect up this one to the principled shader. Now we're going to take the color output from the debris and use that in the factor slot here. We're going to take the factor output from the noise texture in the sand and plug that into this mix shader here. Take this color, plug it into color one. Take the color from the dunes, plug that into color two on this mix node. And then what we're going to do for the colors here and here is take the dark value, control C to copy, control V to paste. And then for this one, we're going to select the lighter color here, control C, control V to copy and paste it. And that gives us the kind of the look of the sand dunes, but we don't have the height or the bump yet. We're going to create that now. Notice how we didn't plug the sand into any of this. The sand detail is only going to create um, bump detail. So to mix all of these together and get all the bumps going on, we're going to need four bump nodes. Obviously going to need to move that out of the way. Now we're going to plug this one into our normal of the principal shader. We need the color output from the debris to go into the height value of this bump node here. We're going to take the output from here and plug that into the normal. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> We're going to take the distance from the sand Voronoi texture, plug that into the height value here, take the output from this bump node, plug that into the normal here. We're going to take the factor from the noise texture in the sand plug that into the height here and then connect normal to normal on these two. And then we need the color from the mix shader or sorry mix node in the dunes to go into the height value of that first bump node. We also need to invert both of those two middle ones. Okay, so on the first bump node, Set the strength at 0.5. On the second, strength at 0.2. On the third, strength at 0.25. And on the last one, we'll leave that strength set at 1. Now, over in my render properties, I'm going to change this to medium low contrast just so we can really sort of make out the detail here. So we can see we've got sandy dunes or ripples in the sand going on, thanks to that wave texture. We've got a crumbly sand effect, thanks to the sand itself. And then if I zoom in quite closely, 
you should be able to make out the little flecks of shell go running through the surface of that um, sphere. There you go, see, there, there. So that's kind of cool. You can obviously play with the settings. Do also play with your lighting because that can make a big difference. Oops, bring that back. Um, yes, before I get carried away. If I offset the actual lighting itself, It can sometimes make it look a bit better. And of course, changing the colors can make a difference too. So maybe if I darken this one a little bit more and lighten this one a bit more, or we'll darken it or we'll lighten it, you can see that we get subtle changes running throughout. So I hope you've managed to follow along and got everything where it needs to be. Um, obviously play with this, you can apply this to a variety of different objects. I applied this to a sphere here, but if I very quickly load a plane and bring that material on, the bump node obviously is, um, uh, what's the word? fake. That's the word I was looking for. It's not um, real height, it's just an illusion of height. So you can put this on a plane. In fact, why don't I just chuck this on the actual floor plane itself. You can see, you can put it on the floor plane itself and it'll look good. Obviously not so great going up on the back, but it's good enough to pass as an illusion. So let's very quickly render this out. What am I using? I'm using basic lighting, 256 samples with the Cycles render engine. And there you have it, a very simple way, I say very simple, there's a lot of nodes involved, but it's a very quick way to put together a passable sandy beach. I hope you've enjoyed this video and will make use of it and of course give the video a thumbs up before you leave and of course subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.